Welcome to this telecast, a generous heart, and that is God's heart above all, and hearts that have been touched by God's heart, generous to a hurting world. And, uh, you know, sometimes there are hot spots in the world, and we look at those areas as hurting, but the reality is that there are people in all kinds of situations. There is rich and poor. There are people in, in every part of the world that in some way are hurting, and God's compassion uh, goes to people, and uh, maybe we in ourselves would not be so naturally compassionate towards hurting, but we are partakers of God's nature. So it, it softens our heart to those in need. We're going to be uh, giving some teaching today, but first of all, I hope you receive our magazine. I can see it on the screen there. It's just yours for the asking. Just uh, send me a text message with your contact address and you'll get it. Call the number on the screen. You can see, by the way, when I'm speaking about phone numbers, there's the Grace Prayer Center phone number. You can call there. And then there is the text phone also where you can send all kinds of messages. Throughout these programs, uh, a generous heart for a hurting world. I am offering this book, You Are There, just for free. And um, it's a nice hardcover book proclamations that brought hope and healing to millions. And I promise you that faith will come in your heart. It will have the same effect on you, this book, as the messages contained in it and the way it affected Hindus, Buddhists, Christians, Muslims, whatever group of people. And uh, so, so order that and order it for your friend. But it's available right now with a gift of any amount. And we hope you'll make that a generous amount, but whatever amount, we will send that to you. So to our topic, one of the absolutes is that we are blessed to be a blessing. The blessing is not like a smorgasbord where you just stuff yourself and can hardly walk afterwards. No, we, we're blessed. We are abundantly blessed, but to be a blessing. Uh, not, it's not a something just of itself. To, uh, I just want more blessing, more blessing. Why? To be a blessing. And then when people think of, of blessing, they sometimes think of, of something coming up, that in eternity I will be blessed. You know, so much of, of preaching, sad to say, is a steady diet of trying to prepare people for eternity. Now, you know, uh, the, the fact is, if you're prepared for this life, if you're prepared for God's blessing now in this life, I promise you, you'll be prepared for eternity. So one of the phrases I've used here, I've done it several weeks in our teaching here, is your blessed life now. And I say the operative word is now, because people think, well, well, later on I'll be blessed, but now, today. And so uh, there are scripture verses that... Um, really are worth chewing on because they really reveal to us this blessing and the enormity of it, how unlimited it is. I, I love to quote Ephesians 1, 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us. Not will bless us, not hope to bless us, not bless us in response to some great thing that we will do, but he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly in Christ. Now, heavenly there means wherever God is. Uh, any blessing, any favor that comes from God, it has been given to us through Jesus Christ. I've used the analogy, it's like you are under an ocean of favor and grace, and there is a pipe right over you, and there's a tap. Now, you can turn off that tap. You can act like, I don't have water, I don't have supply. Or you can turn on that tap. And, and that's what we call our grace response. What's our reaction to God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in Christ? What, what, what's our response to that? Is it like, uh, I don't know. Well, I guess. I just trot along. What is our response to that? And so, you know, I've been talking about that. Let me just recap. One of the responses I said that is so important is to put God first. Put God first. It's just a principle. It's in the, it's symbolized in all kinds of types and illustrations in the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament, about God first. And then Jesus puts the dot on the eye in Matthew 6, 32, 
he talks about the Gentiles seek all these things, all these things we think we need. But he says, your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. And then he says, here's for you. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all those things will be provided to you. And so something happens. If we put God first, it seems everything else falls in line. But if God isn't first, it seems like everything else is confusing. And we don't see the order of things. So that's, that's one response. Put God first. Then I've talked about another response that Jesus makes so distinctly clear. He says, he says it so directly. You cannot, he says, you cannot serve God and mammon. You can't. And let me read it. Matthew 6, no one can serve two masters, for either they will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. You know, it, it just struck me how radical that statement is. There is no wiggle room, no in-between. You can't serve God and mammon. They are mutually exclusive, incompatible. Opposites, no middle ground. He, 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 he says, if you, if you love mammon, and let me say very quickly, mammon is not money. Man, mammon is the spirit of money. It's that spirit of greed and fear and envy and hoarding. You love that. Money is not evil. Money is not good or evil. It depends on who has it. It can be used for righteousness or it can be used for unrighteousness. But Jesus says, if mammon, the spirit of money, takes a hold of you, you can't serve God. Hey, don't even try. You can't. You may say, well, I kind of want to have it both, both ways. I want to find some happy medium, you know. No, no. Now, money you need. You need money to live. God wants to bless you abundantly with all things. The Bible talks about that. But you cannot serve the spirit of greed and money and fear and fear of money and envy. You can't serve because you will be disloyal to God. Either you'll hate God and love mammon or love God and hate mammon. Pretty radical. And, and then I talked about an other response, and that is really what ties in with our title here. And this scripture verse, you know, I, I think I'd seen it, and I'm sure, I, I, you know, at this stage in my life, I've, I've studied the Bible for so many years that uh, a, a verse may strike me like I hadn't seen it before, even though I have seen it. But this one struck me that way. Uh, Proverbs 22, he who has a generous eye will be blessed. Generous eye. He doesn't even say generous heart, though that would have been very appropriate doesn't say generous hands. He says the eye. It's just the way you see things, the way you perceive things. You think in terms of generosity. And, and to paraphrase it, I call it the power of a generous life. It's so powerful. It, it, it changes you, never mind the effects it has on others and for the world. While you're in these programs, I want to also take you to one of our many gospel campaigns because these campaigns are there because people's compassion, people like you, maybe you're a partner with us. Your generous heart made it possible. So I, I want to give you a little taste of what we have seen and heard and what we are continuing to see and hear. Watch this. Jesus' words, the harvest is great, were abundantly demonstrated in Ambea, Tanzania. The World Impact Ministries team had worked with local pastors for months. Journalists representing every media from radio to television and newspapers greeted Peter Youngren with many questions, like what is your message and why have you come to our city? Mingling with pastors representing a wide range of churches and denominations. An impromptu service resulted right at the airport. Later on, a large group of Muslim clerics also brought their welcome. Peter Youngren stated that Jesus is for all people one savior for all people. Many lined the road from the airport to the city center, waving and smiling. Peter Youngren stated, I made eye contact, especially with many of the Muslims, and everyone had such a friendly expression on their faces. Surely this city is ready for the gospel. The Gospel Revolution Seminar started already on day one with hundreds of pastors coming to be trained in gospel ministry. The partners of the World Impact Ministries make these seminars possible. 
Many pastors come from extreme poverty, living on less than $3 per day, but thanks to the partners, they receive food and lodging. God works in a powerful way in the hearts of these pastors. Their vision is expanded, faith comes in their hearts, and they receive a fresh revelation of the gospel of God's grace. It is deeply moving to see pastors dedicate themselves to the gospel. To date, more than 371,000 pastors have been trained through World Impact Ministries outreaches. Already the first night of the Friendship Festival, so called to send a message to people of all religions that they are welcome, thousands crowded onto the football field. Peter immediately turned the people's attention towards Christ. I've come here to be a witness. You have many beautiful churches and beautiful mosques. Many beautiful preachers. But I have come to be a witness. To give you proof. That Jesus is alive. Something is going to happen in your heart. When the invitation to receive Christ was given, thousands received responded that they wanted to receive the new life in Christ. What had begun at the airport continued on the football field, a great eagerness for Jesus Christ and his gospel. Already on the first night, many shared this story of what God did for them. Say what I say. Ambea. Ambea. Dar es Salaam. Yes, Lord. Africa. Africa. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Zanzibar. Zanzibar. Dar es Salaam. And Bea. This is mother and daughter. The daughter says, I have seen her walk like never before. But mama is showing the daughter she wants to run instead. Bea. Africa. America. And there was much more to come. We'll show you more in just a moment, but I, I want you to see there the, see the pastors. We gather the pastors. This is such an important part because many times pastors, in you know, all their busyness of pastoring, that they have forgotten the gospel. And we want to refocus the pastors because it's so easy to be a pastor. You know that's true in your town. And then the pastors all focus on his members. He calls it my church, my members, you know, a very possessive term, my church. It's actually Jesus' church. But, and so we, we go in there with a gospel revolution seminar to turn their attention from, from being so introverted to something bigger. So help us sponsor pastors. I think we have a screen there that just shows you what that one aspect of many aspects of our ministry can do. If you look on the screen, you'll see it there. I think it's... Uh, you sponsor three pastors to be a part of a, a three-day seminar where we, where we do this refocusing, $84. Maybe you can help us with that. Be generous. Let your generous heart reach out to the world. Well, uh, let me get to a very important point. Generosity motivated by Jesus Christ. This is the key to understand. When I read the Bible, and I think on another program we talked, for example, about how one of the churches, it says they were poor, they were under attack, they were under duress. But in the middle of that, they abounded in generosity. And you say, well, what motivated them? Was it fear? Was it that the preacher said, well, if you don't give, God's not going to bless you? No, they were motivated by Jesus Christ. And, and see, if I use some kind of manipulative tactic to get you to give money, we need money. We need your support. We need you to pray for us. For us. You need, we need you to give. We need you to participate. But you know, if I use some manipulation, and I never want to do that. No, I ask you straightforward. I ask you unashamedly, will you help us? We put our phone number there. We have a website. We say go to peteryoungren.org and it says slash uh, uh, VIP or something like that. Very important person. We're very straightforward, but we don't manipulate. We say this is what it's for and that's what it's for. Because I don't want you to become a giver even to the gospel because of some manipulation. Now, whatever reason people give, we, we'll put the money into the gospel. But my desire is generosity 
motivated by Jesus Christ. And that's why smack dab in the middle of the Apostle Paul's teaching about giving and stewardship, he says this, 2 Corinthians 8, 9, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, you know that. There's this favor, this unmerited favor of the Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, all of heaven's riches, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you, we can say that we, through his poverty might become rich. So, so it is, it, we call that the, the great exchange, just like he took our sin, he took our sickness, he took our poverty, and he gives us something much better, salvation, healing, life, but also increase. Your needs are met. See, when we are motivated by Jesus Christ, it makes us take the limits off. I mean, we take the foot off the brake and say, you know, I'm not going to be such a tightwad. I'm going to let generosity, God's generous heart touch me, and I will let, let the generosity in my heart touch the world because I am motivated by Jesus Christ. Now, there's an interesting story in the Gospel of Luke, and it's found within a two page, few pages in that book. There's first a story of a man we call the rich young ruler, and he encountered Jesus. But his encounter with Jesus did not result in generosity. Instead, because he was kind of a braggadocious man, he said, you know, I've, I, I've, I've kept all the commandments from childhood. He was so full of himself. And then Jesus, to kind of prick his balloon, so to speak, said to him, well, what about giving your money to the poor? Sell what you have. And then he says, he went sorrowfully away. So that rich young ruler, his encounter with Jesus didn't meet, didn't lead to generosity. He didn't respond. You know, we talked about responding. He, he didn't respond, at least not in a positive way. Then you turn the page and you find another story, Luke chapter 19, of a man called Zacchaeus. I sometimes call him the mafia boss of Jericho. And Jesus just spontaneously said to him, I'm going to come to your house, Zacchaeus. I'm going to visit your house. And Zacchaeus opened the door. And then at the very encounter with Jesus in his home, Zacchaeus became spontaneous. He said, well, he was just so overwhelmed. He says, I'm going to give four times of what I stole because he had a history of stealing. Everybody knew he was a thief, kind of skimming um, tax money off the top and putting it in his own pocket. He says, I'm going to give four times back. So for Zacchaeus, his encounter with Jesus resulted in a generous heart reaching out to a hurting world. See, the difference between the rich young ruler and Zacchaeus is one of them was very begrudging. You know, he says, I've served God, but you can tell he'd done it out of necessity. I have to. While the other one was, was just happy, joyous. You know, that, that's what Paul is addressing in 2 Corinthians 9, 8. He says, when, when we are generous, we're not doing it grudgingly or of necessity. It's not because you're under pressure, for God loves a cheerful giver. And the rich young ruler, whatever he, we read about him, he did it grudgingly, sorrowful. I guess if I had to. It was like he had a gun to his head. You, you better give. You know, that's sad. I, I had a couple join our church one time, and they asked us how we do finances. And I told them, well, we just believe that people will be touched by generosity. And they explained to me that in their particular denomination that they had come from, one of the elders would visit their home and investigate about everybody's salary and then make it kind of a demand that they would give so and so much to the church. I suppose it seems sensible to the budget, but I don't think it's the gospel way. It's not giving by constraint or being burdened. It is this generosity. You know, God loves things done freely and willingly. Well, I want to talk to you more about that. Keep that one in mind, but I promise to show you one little more clip from that one campaign that we showed earlier. Here we go. You Are Loved is emblazoned on the large banner behind the platform. Systematically, in country after country, 
the message reaches millions that God's love has been expressed for them through Jesus Christ. For more than 25 years, conducting 16 gospel campaigns, from Dar es Salaam to Moshi to Dodoma, in Muslim cities like Tanga and Amtuara, and many other cities, the ministry in Tanzania includes operating World Impact Bible Institute, and to date, training more than 11,000 pastors and leaders in this country alone. During his opening prayer, Peter would say, Lord, help me to preach the gospel with power. Help the people to listen, believe, and receive, and let us know that the gospel of Jesus Christ is not only in word, but in power. This is the key. The gospel must be presented in power. Come and touch my nose. Flat it. How many? How many now? Look at mama go. Look at mama go. That left leg became sick. Mama. Mama. Papa. Papa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It was the tumor. It was right inside of her mouth. And it's gone. Many spoke with great emotion, describing the wonder of what God had done. to make sure. People eagerly told their story, how their eyesight had been recovered, deaf ears opened, tumors had vanished, and others described how they had carried relatives and friends who previously were unable to walk. Logano, Logano, when you rolled around on the floor, money fell out of your pocket. But don't worry, nobody's gonna steal your money. The tumor was right here. Now there's no tumor. Everything is completely normal. Julius, who healed you? Jesus. Oh, how long did you have that tumor? The highlight was to see how God's saving power was revealed to the people. On the last day, people ran to the front in response to the invitation to make a public confession that they were confessing Jesus Christ as their Lord. Because of partners who provide the finances, new believers receive teaching material. Salvation brings joy and there was joy in Ambea City. All that happens because of people's generous hearts. Thank you for being part of that. You know, I, I, I think it said on the screen before we went to that clip, God loves things done freely and willingly. Think about it. Maybe they'll put it there again. God loves things done freely and willingly. We're not looking to manipulate or try to make some false promise. We are just shooting straight out saying, this is what Jesus told us to prioritize. Jesus is important. If Jesus said again and again in every gospel that the priority was to give that message of hope and transformation to every creation, every person, then we take that serious. And, and so, but, but, but we do it freely and willingly. It's not some kind of bondage, some kind of duress. And so that's what I want you today to let generosity, which means there's no such thing as sad or begrudging generosity. It's freely and it's willing. Uh, look again at our gospel campaigns. I think we have a screen on that. It's just amazing. You know, with all the people we are reaching, I think it's about $150, and you're able to, to reach a 1,000 people, uh, most of them, or many from unreached people groups. Many of our campaigns are held in areas where the gospel light is so dim. Uh, you, you say, that's a lot of money. $150, maybe you can do a portion of that. But others can maybe do $1,500 or $15,000. But somebody can do thirty or fifty. dollars Do what you can. And, and then we look at follow-up material. How important is that? Uh, millions have received follow-up material. You can see the numbers there. Maybe you say, well, I could do that. I mean, 
just think of 300 individuals. Think of a church building that seats 300 people and it's full. And think about that all those people were people who, who just came to Jesus and you gave them the material. I thank you for that seed gift of $90 that will do that. And, and, and then our Bible school. You could sponsor Bible school students. You know, you could never do this in the United States or Canada for that amount. But our schools in, in other different parts of the world, your money goes so far. Look at that. $70 sponsors a student for one month. Every student pays a little tiny bit themselves, just a few dollars. But the big part of it is your sponsorship. And, and you saw the other amounts. I think if you did the whole school year, three semesters, $700. I don't know how you're going to respond. I just pray that you are going to respond, that you will say, yes, I want to participate in some way. I want to help reach out to people. I pray, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, that there will be an awareness in our heart to that generosity, which is from God himself, and help us to respond to a hurting world. I think about Jesus when he saw the multitudes, when he saw the people that were hurting, you know, his disciples, they said, I send them home. They almost thought that the people were a nuisance. You know, you know why are they all coming around here? It's like, like, send them away. Get rid of the people. Sometimes I've been in situations where the need is so huge, it's screaming at you. And someone says, oh, we, we need the ushers to keep the people away. I said, don't be like Jesus' disciples. Jesus didn't say, yeah, send everybody away. Get rid of them. He says he was moved with compassion, generosity, and a generous heart for a hurting world. Would you go to your telephone right now? Would you do what you can? And, and maybe even go beyond that and say, I, I want to join the VIP family to give something every month. Or maybe you want to give your very best gift right now. And then remember, as you do that, you can see how you can do it. You can call or go online. But also in the name of Jesus, the same power of God that touched people in that report that you saw, that same Jesus is there where you are. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So you receive. Let us know what God has done for you. You are loved. Thank you. Your participation makes this global gospel ministry possible. To share your prayer request or to help bring the gospel to those who have never heard it, call 416-745-1820. You can give at www.peteryoungren.org or send your gift to World Impact Ministries at P.O. Box 62039, RPO, Victoria Terrace, North York, Ontario, M4A2W1 or P.O. Box 433, Winchester, Kentucky, 40392-9800. Together, let's give everyone a chance to know God's love in Jesus Christ.